Hello, Year 10. This is a very short screencast that will give you some final tips for tomorrow's exam. Needless to say, everything you need to know is in the syllabus. In particular, however, have a look at these two pages. Pages 69 and between 71 and 72. You will need to learn these before tomorrow, and I mean memorize them. What we have here is we have the quantitative and qualitative analysis for chemistry and the electrical symbols for uh, physics. Tables. You could be asked to draw a table. Not that kind of table, but this kind of table. Now here, the student has simply put data into the table, but they've done that wrong. They've put the units as well, as you can see. There should be no units in the table itself. Units only go in the heading. What happens if you're asked to draw your own table? Well, you might be given some data like this. What you have to do is you have to uh, usually draw two columns. Uh, the left-hand column, as you can see, contains the independent variable. This is the variable that was changed in the experiment. The right-hand column contains the dependent variable which is the factor that was measured. Things to remember, make sure you use a ruler. As I mentioned previously, only include your units in the column headings, separated by a solidus or a slash. And as I've just mentioned, you must put your independent variable, the factor that you change in the left. Line graphs. When you're drawing a line graph, ensure that the independent variable goes on the x-axis. The dependent goes on the y. Make sure there's an origin. What I mean by that is that there is a value, usually zero, uh, at the uh, bottom left-hand corner of the graph. Don't be lazy with your axis labels. Uh, write out the full name of the variable. So if it's length, don't abbreviate to L. Write length. Follow the instructions regarding how to draw the line. Do not extrapolate, uh, go beyond the last plotted point. And if there are two lines, ensure that you use a different uh, uh, point um, to plot. So it could be uh, crosses for one of your lines and encircled dots for the other. Let's have a look at some examples of poor and good work with these things in mind. This graph, um, Students have been a bit lazy because we should have had a mean here. Uh, the table is not shown. Uh, what they haven't done, as you can see, is they've joined their uh, points with curves. And it clearly says that they had to join them with ruled lines. This student's done the same. They haven't joined them with ruled lines, as you can see. It's a curve. Uh, the mistake also here is that they've abbreviated minutes to M. And that's not allowed. M means meters, doesn't it? So like I said, don't be lazy with your uh, labels. Write it all out. I would have written time minutes. This is nearly uh, full marks. We can see that the student has drawn ruled lines here. Uh, but we haven't got an origin. There is no value at the corner. We should have zero there. So here is a fantastic graph, and that would get full marks for this particular question. What about bar charts? Well, similar rules apply. So the independent variable must be on the uh, x and the dependent on the y. We have our origin point. Don't be lazy again. Only draw a bar chart if the data is discontinuous. So that might be, for example, um, different quantities or uh, masses of sugar in different fruits, where fruits would go on the x-axis fruit type would be discontinuous data. Use a ruler to draw the bars. Ideally, have an equal sized gap between your bars and make sure that the bars are equal in width. So here we don't have a value at the origin. I think the student might have rubbed that out, but it's not very clear. You can see that the bars are touching, and that's not good. And we do not have any labels on the axes. Uh, this student, again, fails to include an origin, zero there. Uh, their other mistake is, I'm trying to work it out, 
Uh, I don't think they've included um, the full label on the um, on the x-axis. Uh, this, however, is a perfect graph, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. What about drawings? Well, drawings um, in science are very different to drawings in art. Uh, there should be uh, an emphasis on size. You must have it a rather large size, your drawing. Fill the space available. Use a sharp pencil. Make sure your lines are continuous. Do not include any shading whatsoever, even if you're tempted to. Do not. And uh, ensure that labels have been placed as appropriate, as instructed by the question. Let's look at some examples. So if you are asked to draw this, you can clearly see that the temptation would be to shade, but you should not. Uh, the problem with this diagram is I believe there is one label missing. Otherwise, it's pretty good. This one is a poor diagram. We can see that the lines are all sketchy. This is not good. This is not good, and so on. Uh, we have labels that are not um, full. The label lines have not been drawn with a, a ruler. Um, and it doesn't look anything like the picture, whereas this one did. This is a very good example, which uh, covers everything required. And as you can see, uh, it's not a piece of art. We have no shading, we have no shadows. We want it to be plain, clean and simple. Here's another example of some poor drawings. This student has drawn sketchy lines. Shading is present. Uh, we have no labels. This is better, but shading is still there. That would have meant they lost a mark. But this is a very good example. You can see that uh, there's no shading. The lines are nice and clean and clear, and it's a good size. If you're asked to design an investigation, you should remember a few things too. Make sure you identify the thing that you're varying, the independent variable, but don't just identify it. Tell the examiners how you will vary this and how many times you will vary it. Identify the dependent variable and how you will measure that. Most important, make sure you identify the that and also how you will keep them constant. Talk about repeating the experiment and from that repeated data calculating a mean value. This increases reliability. It's also worth always referring to a specific safety consideration, not just wear a lab coat, but for example, if you're using hot water, um, you would ensure that you are standing during the practical. If you're using a knife, you would cut away from you. Let's have a look at an example. You are given milk and natural live yogurt. Describe an experiment for five marks you could carry out to show that the bacteria in the natural yogurt must be alive for milk to be turned into more yogurt. It's quite a difficult question, this. A clue, because you should know this, that when milk turns into yogurt, lactic acid is produced. It's anaerobic respiration. Um, the worst thing you can do is just leave something like this blank. What you should do if you are really stuck is simply write bullet points. Bullet point answers are not as good because you might miss out some information compared to when you write in full prose. But the examiner will still mark bullet points just as if it was a full paragraph of text. Here is the mark scheme. You can see that the examiners want a method for producing bacteria-free yogurt. You could kill the bacteria by boiling the yogurt, perhaps. Um, you would add the bacteria-free yogurt to the milk. Here is the method. And the yogurt, which is live to the milk. Some reference to controlling the, the volume. So we have an example here of a factor that must be controlled or kept constant and some um, reference to keeping the temperature constant and the time constant. Um, here is a reference to the dependent variable and how it would be measured. With this question, it's very important that you follow those tips I showed you a minute ago. Independent variable, dependent variable, controlled variables, 
repeat, and then safety. On some other mark schemes, you will see further marks for various um, points that I've mentioned. So here is a good example of a student that managed to get five marks, even in half of the space available. But like I said, the worst thing you can do is leave something like this blank, even making a few bullet points relating to repeating the investigation and calculating a mean, if you cannot think of anything else to say. Other important points, make sure that if you're asked to do a magnification calculation, uh, review your answer. It's quite common for students to do this type of thing and tell the examiner that the actual length of a cell is 10 meters. Have a look at that and you'll see that that is a ridiculous answer. What they should have done is divided 50 by 200. Learn the food tests. You did, you did those back in year nine. Here is the test for sugars, reducing sugars such as glucose. Uh, what you do is you add Benedict's reagent, which is blue. You must heat and you must boil, in fact. Don't just say heat. It must be very hot. If you've got low concentration of glucose, it goes green. A higher concentration, it goes yellow. Uh, even higher concentration, it will go orange. But the highest concentration of sugar gives you a, a red color. So the positive test for sugar is any of these colors with increasing concentration from left to right. A negative test for sugars would be blue. Test for starch is a little easier. You just add iodine solution, which is uh, red-brown. And as you can see, if starch is present, it goes blue slash black. Blue slash black. Test for protein, you will use the Biorex reagent. This turns purple in the presence of protein. It's blue to begin with, but turns purple if protein is present. The test for lipids is a bit more complicated. What you have to do is you have to uh, mix the food sample with uh, some ethanol, alcohol, give it a good shake, pour it carefully into some distilled water. And if you form an emulsion, which is a cloudy white um, suspension, then you've got uh, a positive test. You know that that original sample had lipid. Uh, the very worst word to use tomorrow in your paper six test it is an interesting word. Um, it has no place in science. And it's illustrated quite nicely by this exam question. Uh, I'll let you read this in your own time by pausing the screencast, but you can see that the examiners have asked for the student to give three factors that must be kept constant. And I, met, I mentioned this a moment ago in relation to controlled variables. If you go to the mark scheme, you'll see this. The word amount is the worst word in science. Never use that in your um, writing. And that goes beyond year 10. Amount doesn't have any units. And that's the key to understanding why it's not a preferred uh, word. You must refer to specific quantity terms. So volume, concentration, even mass is okay, but not amount. All the very best tomorrow. The intention of this screencast is simply to reiterate some of the knowledge that you've built up over the past uh, two years or more, if you've been in AIS and carried out EPIs, uh, I would suggest that you reflect on what I've said, maybe watch the screencast another time, and some of these last minute tips, I hope, will stick in your mind tomorrow afternoon. Good luck.